That's my God, that's my shepherd, my protector, that's my king, that's my rock, that's my anchor, my Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. As we gather in, go ahead and take your seat. How many is excited for the praise jam this morning? <clears throat> I'm going to ask our ushers to go ahead and make their way up. Ushers, if you could, if you have a tithe and offering, they will be uh, coming to you this morning. I know it's against our uh, custom tradition. So y'all go ahead and take that as I share some announcements. Y'all go ahead and take it. So, um want to say, just say thanks to everyone who has signed up for the spring cleaning. For those who's already done that, thank you so much. Uh, Easter is next week, so if you could wrap those things up this week, that would be awesome. Looking forward to a wonderful service next week. Go ahead, Brother Henley. You can take the offering up. And um, so next week, Easter, take an opportunity to invite somebody to the church. going to be a great day. Starts at 10 with live classes. And, of course, worship service at 11. And then Wednesday is our annual communion and foot washing service. So uh, we look forward to that. Everybody is in the sanctuary. Launch Student Ministries, Lego Church. Everybody's in the sanctuary as we teach and we take communion together and we conclude with washing feet uh, as God gives us the example of being a servant. Uh, Tuesday is prayer at 7 p.m. I want to share a couple of three actually good, great miracles today. Uh, on Friday, Brother Gary G. sent me a text. He was praying for a friend and uh, that was sick. That is in a hospital in Hartsill. Uh, just needed, about to have cataract surgery and some major procedures. But anyway, as he is praying, he gets refilled with the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. The last time he had talked in tongues was back in the 80s. So we appreciate the renewing for Brother G that took place on Thursday. Also, Sister Judy went back to the doctor this week. And um, in March, she had pictures done before her surgery and after her sur surgery. And they went back and uh, the status of the spot in the back of her neck, lower head area, is just a pencil period mark. So we give God glory for removing that cancer there and believing God's going to finish that up has a follow-up on the 22nd, and uh, just believing God's going to do everything for Sister Judy. And lastly, want to pray for or thank God for Sister Tammy. If you was at the, I think it was the Sunday night service with Brother Gary Vick, uh, he prayed for Sister Tammy Brantley, and in his prayer he acknowledged that one leg was longer than the other, or one leg was shorter than the other. And it was actually her hips were out of alignment, and for many, many, many years, she had one hip that was about an inch higher than the other hip, causing her legs to be off. She went to a new chiropractor, and the new chiropractor did x-rays. And as he was going over the x-ray, she told him nothing. He pointed out on his own, drew a line from hip to hip, saying, These hips are perfectly parallel. How awesome is our God? Why don't we stand to our feet? Why don't we just lift up our hands and just thank the Lord for His mercy and His grace. I thank you for your presence, your miracle working hand. I pray, God, that you will minister and speak into every heart, every life today as we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. How many is ready for Praise Jam? Woo! Let's clap our hands. Let's worship the Lord as we turn it over to Praise Jam. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineup for the Toon Squad. 
Everybody get up, it's time to praise now. We got a real thing going on. Welcome to the praise jam. Here's your chance to your dance at the praise jam. All right. Come on and praise. Don't care what people say. Come on and praise. We follow in his way. What you gonna do? Hey, you, what you gonna do? Hey, you, what you gonna do? Hey, you, what you gonna do? All about safe in the house, let's go. Either way, the truth the like you know. Text that loud and let them know. It's time to praise. He ain't show to the streets. We'll shout his name to the world. Then we'll proclaim. You do you. His work affirm. Christ the body, everybody. Holy vessels, he's so mighty. Is life everlasting? Oh, new life, hey, pastor. Preach it up. New life, Faith's gonna raise, raise it up. up. Come on, y'all, step out your seats and praise. Let's go, all right? Everybody, get up. It's time to praise now. We got the real thing going on. Welcome to the praise jam. Here's your chance to your dance at the praise jam. All right, all right, all right, all right. Put your hands in the air. Jesus is alive. We're gonna put it all in His hands. Welcome to the praise jam. Here's your chance to your dance at the praise jam. All right, all right, all right. Come on, it's time to get higher. Hallelujah! Stay with us. Hallelujah! Come on, what my sister say? Hallelujah! Now, my friends say Hallelujah! Come on and praise, praise you say. Come on, come on, do it. Praise, praise you say. Yes, he will. Give your best, he will bless. Come on and praise. Don't care what people say. Come on and praise. We follow in his way. Come on and praise. Watch Granny. Come on and praise. Don't care what people say. And everything is gonna be okay. In the views, watch out because we're coming through. He gives everything you need. Oh, what a sight. You see me and I see you. Praise on it. It's time to run. He's called you out and I see you. He said, come on, church, let's pray. We're free. Everybody get up. It's time to praise now. We got the real thing going on. Welcome to the praise jam. Here's your chance to your man at the praise jam. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Put your hands in the air, Jesus is alive. We're gonna put it all in his hands. Welcome to the praise jam. Here's your chance to your dance at the praise jam. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, you ready to stop? Yeah, you wanna know why? Why? Cause it's time to praise jam. Yeah, y'all ready to stop? No. Y'all wanna know why? Why? It's time to praise jam. Get up, it's time to praise now. We got a real thing going on. Welcome to the praise jam. Here's your chance to your name at the praise jam. All right. Put your hands in the air, Jesus is alive. We're gonna put it all in his hands. Welcome to the praise jam. Here's your chance to your dance. The Y'all ready for jam. another? All right. Here we go. Let me hear you say Pull your back my ball guys will collect all of the balls. Just, just. If you have a ball, throw it to one of the ball guys so they can collect them. 
How many of you guys have had fun? Yeah. Woo! How many of you guys were here Friday night? Yeah. Awesome. Glad to have you back. How many of you guys weren't here on Friday night? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're glad to have you. Even if you weren't here on Friday night, we're here to have some fun and great times. But guess what I have? I think I have some prizes to give away. Y'all want some prizes? How many of them should I draw? 25? All right, we'll have a seat. We'll have to see how many we can draw. Um, Brother Trent, somebody, can I get my bowl of tickets? We have a bowl of tickets somewhere. Tickets. Who is, huh? Y'all have a ticket? Everybody have a ticket? All the kids have a ticket? If you're missing a ticket, raise you your do. hand. If you're missing a ticket, if you don't and have you a ticket. don't have a ticket, raise your hands up. <laughs> if you have a ticket... Brother Climber doesn't have his ticket. He's a kid Did he heart. get a ticket? Did you get a ticket? No, I need one more ticket. Brother Trent, I need a ticket. Na, 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 na. Whoa, hey, I, well, we're waiting on a ticket. Let's give it a let's give a big round of applause to all of our characters this weekend. Woo! Hey, I don't know about you guys, but let's give it up for Sister Cassie who rewrote Space Jam into New Life Space Jam. Let's give it up to all of our snacks, our helps, our decorators, everybody who's helped out to make Praise Woo! Jam what it is. It can't be, it wouldn't be what it is without our amazing children's team. I think we should give them big, one big more round of applause. Come on, come on, kids, come on. All right, all right. I'm going to draw a couple names. The last four digits on your ticket. Do you know how to do that? If you don't know how to do that, talk to the person next to you. The last four digits. To save time, we're going to go really, really fast. If I call your name, I want you to go see either the prize lady on the right or the prize lady on the left. Whichever one you want to go to. Are you ready? Beautiful. Here we She's go. Beautiful. Here beautiful. we go. If I'm going to draw them fast, if I'm going to draw a lot, I got to draw them fast. Y'all ready? Nine, five, two, seven. Nine, five, two, seven. You got it? Go for it. <laughs> Woo! All right. Here we go. Nine, five, two, two. Nine five two two, go for it right there. All right, here we go. Good job. Nine five oh, one one, go for it. Here we go. Here we go. Nine five four three. Anybody nine five four three? Nine five. Hey, go for it. All right, here we go. <laughs> nine five three eight. Give me nine five one. three eight. We know which one that one was. Here we go. Here we go. You're welcome. Nine five three nine. Well, they're going in order. Nine five three nine. Go, Gabe. All right. Here we go. Nine five zero six. Nine five zero six. Restart that one. Restart that one. Nine five zero six. Nobody. No Do one. another one. Yeah. All right. Here Aww. we go. Nine five three zero. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Nine, hey, Bethel. Good Here job. we go. Bethel. Another one. Nine four three seven six. Nine four seven six. Repeat it. Nine four seven six. A little more not nine, four, hillbilly. Seven, six? Huh? I, think, I think your accent's too hillbilly. Oh. Nine yeah. four seven and six. That made it worse. That okay. <laughs> nine five. Nine four. Nine seven, four six, seven, seven six. Nine five four zero. Nine. Huh? Did you call nine five three seven earlier? I didn't. No, not yet. No. <laughs> nine five four zero. Nine five four zero. Oh. That's Emma. Go for it, Emma. And it's her birthday today. I'm going fast. I promise. I told you I'd do a lot of them. Nine. Oh, is it, is it Emma? Is it your birthday today? Yes. Happy birthday. Nine four nine zero. Nine four nine zero. No, nobody. Who'd y'all give these to? Nine five two nine. 
Woo! Come on, go, 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 go. 9532. 9532. 9532. Nobody. Nobody. All right, here we go. 9528. Not, oh, go for it. That's you. Let's go. Uh, either it's you or somebody sneezed. Yeah. Nine, five, three, two. Goliath, go, go. Let's go. Nice. Nine, five, one, Woo. five. Tough. Jacob's like, yep, I mean. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Nine, five, zero, three. Oh, so close. So close. So close. So close. No one? All right, here we go. 9513. <laughs> Praise the Nine, Lord. 9513. Some of these kids are. Nine, oh, there we go. We have a winner. All right, here, I'm going to do. I'm going to do just a couple more real quick, and then we may do some after service. Okay, you ready? 9518. She's over here. She's just super quiet about it. Nine five three three. Nine five Smart. one nine. Nine five one nine. Hunter Hogan. Oh, I knew you loved Who the children's department. Who are you picking this up for? Nine five zero zero. <laughs> nine five zero zero. Zero 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 zero. zero. Nobody. Nine five two five. They're over here beating themselves up because they didn't have the right number. Here we They're go. 9499. 9499. Nine, nine. Come on, come on. Is it you? <laughs> Let me see. 9525. Five. No, that's not you. It was the one before that. Well, that, that was the one before. Go, go, go for it. Go for it. You're I can't right. remember he, all don't, these he doesn't know how to. Nobody count. had the 9499? 9499? Nine, <laughs> nine, nine, nine. No. No. They're on uh, live stream. 9508. I bet they're on live stream crying right now. They are. I'd be. 9504. 9504. All right, I tell you what. <laughs> if y'all do really good and you worship and praise, we may do some right after church, okay? <gasps> nice. You want popcorn? We'll see. We'll see. Hey, I got a, I've got a great surprise for you guys tonight. They were here on Friday night. And they did an amazing job. So we're going to invite them back today. It's our very own New Life Children's Choir. Y'all want to hear the New Life Children's Choir? All right, children. Remember what I said. Anywhere not above the top step. Can y'all come line up? Not above the top step. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, you don't want to miss out. There you go. All right. Remember, sing loud, sing proud, and don't scream. Are you ready? Let's hit it. I wish I could tell you. I wish I could describe it. Couldn't contain it. Can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint a whole picture. Not enough words to ever say what I found. Here we go. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful and powerful. Who are we talking Who about? about? That's my king. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor. He's all together worthy. Who are we talking about? That's my king. Come louder. There's, There's no one before you. Yes, yes we will adore you. And all of this is for you. Who are we talking, talking about? That's, That's my king. Jesus, you are my king. Yeah. I'm not letting the rocks cry without joining the chorus. There are enough notes to make a harmony. It's the song of the angels through all of the ages, with all of the earth and heaven symphony. Here we go! 
Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful and powerful. Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? about? That's my king. There we go. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor. We're all together worthy. Who are we talking about? That's my king. There's no one one before you. Yes, Yes, we will adore you. All of this is for you. Who Who are we talking talking about? That's my king. That's my God. That's my shepherd. My protector. That's my king. That's my rock. There you go. That's my anchor. My defender. That's my king. got this friend. Do y'all want him to come back out? Yeah. yeah? Did y'all enjoy that? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to invite Brother Buford to come back, and he is going to talk to us, but we've got to remember a couple things. What do we got to remember? We got to remember to stay in our seats unless he calls for us, and we need to remember to stay in here because we don't want to miss anything. You're going to do that for me? If y'all can do that for me, and you guys can come to the altar, and you guys can give it everything you got, praying, raising your hands and praising him, I think Sister April has a couple more prizes we'll give out at the very end, okay? Sound good? Sound good? Okay. Brother Buford, everybody, let's give Brother Buford a big round of applause. Oh, yeah. He pounded. I mean, Praise he pounded. the Lord, everybody. Lord. That was weak. Weak sauce. I mean, come on. Can't Tennessee do any better than that? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Awesome. How about this? Praise the Lord, all the girls. Praise the Lord, all the boys. Hmm. I don't know. I think the boys, y'all got to wake up a little bit. You can't let the girls win. Should we try it again? All right, praise the Lord, all the girls. All right, praise the Lord, all the boys. There you go, some manly men. I love it. I'm so glad to be here. We're excited to be here in Tullahoma. Thank you again, Brother and Sister Kelly, for allowing us a chance to minister. We had fun on Friday. Had a great uh, children's uh, worker training session yesterday, and we've just enjoyed it. Had so much fun. I wish my wife and daughter Zoe could be here. They're holding down the fort at our church there in O'Fallon, Missouri. But I've got Zeke and Zane, and I'm glad they're with me. How many of you remember my song that I did uh, uh, Friday? Tony? Remember Tony Chestnut? Y'all, y'all want to try it again? Let's try it. Come up, Zane and Zo- uh, Zeke. Why don't y'all help me out? Why don't you stand up? And um, uh, this just kind of gets us loose loosened up. This is a very spiritual song. If you listen to the words, it will minister to you deeply, and, um, uh, and then it also gets your, your blood pumping, all right? <clears throat> Are y'all ready? Are you ready? 
Say, Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. Tony knows. Tony knows. Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. That's what Tony knows. I was at a kids' camp one time, and we taught them that song, and they, you know, we sang it pretty much all the time. It's it's one of the things that the Buford family does. And uh, the very last day of kids' camp, I told them, I said, y'all ought to sing that all the way home. I got a phone call from one of the drivers of a church bus. He was so mad at me. He said, Brandon, I'm going to kill you. He said, they sang that song for four hours all the way home. Because it's just such an awesome song. And I love that y'all are singing it. Say, Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. Tony knows. Tony knows. Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. That's what Tony knows. I'm singing Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. Tony knows, Tony knows, Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. That's what Tony knows. I'm singing Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. Tony knows, Tony knows, Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. That's what Tony knows. I'm singing Tony Chestnut knows God loves him. Tony knows, Tony knows, Tony Chestnut knows. That's what Tony knows. Give it up for Zane. Love you, Z. Stay right here. <clears throat> I'm so thankful that God loves us. So thankful that God. That's what, we, that's what we talked about on Friday. We talked about the love of the shepherd that goes and finds the sheep. And uh, I want to sing this song. Do y'all, uh, um, let, let's do it with no music. We, I was going to do another song, but let's do this one because I like it. It says there's no place it's too high. So you got to reach up way high. There's no place it's too low. Reach way down low. There's no place in this whole world, make a big world, where he, point up to the sky, he can't go. There's no place that's too cold. There's no place that's too hot. There's no place on earth where Jesus is not. If I go to the left, now I'm going to your left, okay? So if I go to the left, if I go to the right, there's no place on earth. Where I'm out of his sight, because Jesus, he is everywhere. All right? Y'all think y'all can help me sing that? Why don't you stand? You got to have a little room, okay? All right. Here's what it goes. It says, there's no place that's too high or place that's too low. There is no place on earth. Where he cannot go, there's no place that's too cold, no place that's too hot. There is no place on earth where my Jesus is not. And if I go to the left, if I go to the right, there is no place on earth where I'm out of his sight. Jesus, so oh, he's everywhere. There's no place that's too high or place that's too low. There is no place on earth where he cannot go. There's no place that's too cold. There's no place that's too high. There is no place on earth where Jesus is not. And if I go to the left, if I go to the right, there is no place on earth where I'm out of his sight. Say, Jesus, so oh, he's everywhere. Aren't you thankful for that? Now stay standing, stay standing. That means when you go to church, he's going to be with you. That means when you go home today, he's going to be with you. And, and I, I get it, you know, we say uh, there's no place that's too high, and we, we make a kind of a high sign, and no place is too low and hot. And Well, no, this would be cold. Cold and hot. But does anybody know why when we talk about Jesus, we do this? 
Anybody know why we do that? Somebody tell me. Raise your hand, and, and, and I'll ask you to. All right? What, what, why, why do we do this for Jesus? All right? So somebody else, help me out. Why, why, why do we do this for Jesus? To show that we love him? Okay. Somebody help me out right there. Yep. Why this for Jesus? Is that we're okay? I'm reaching. There you go. Because he died on the cross. What, what do you think is so important about pointing to his hands? Anybody want to know what happened on the cross? There were nails in his hands. How many of you know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me? He was nailed to the cross, right? I mean, this is Palm Sunday, and, and, and just in a week, we'll have Easter Sunday, and, and I'm thankful that he was nailed to the cross. The Bible says it like this. The Bible says that he took all of your sin, and he took all of my sin, and he nailed it to the cross. When I should have been the one, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. When I should have been the one that faced the punishment, Jesus took my sin, and he nailed it to the cross. But I'm so thankful he didn't just stay on the cross. You're not going to find a cross in my church with Jesus still on it because Jesus isn't still on the cross. They was buried in a tomb, and I'm thankful for that. But oh, three days later, the Bible says that tomb exploded open and Jesus came alive and he was resurrected. Can I tell you right now that there is no sin too big? You need to understand that. I realize I'm preaching not just to kids today. We got the whole church. So let me help some of you adults out. You can't get so bad that Jesus doesn't love you. You can't do enough sin that Jesus would write you off. You can't do enough heartaches that Jesus would forget about you. There is no sin too big that Jesus doesn't love you. And there's no sin too small that you don't need forgiven. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter where you try to run from God. His love is going to find you. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Sing it one more time and sing it with that, that feeling we just felt as I did a little preaching. Say, there's no place that's too high or place that's too low. There is no place on earth. Where he cannot go, there's no place that's too cold. There's no place that's too hot. There is no place on earth where Jesus is not. And if I go to the left, if I go to the right, there is no place on earth. Where I'm out of his sight, saying, Jesus, oh, he's everywhere. Would you lift your hands and would you lift your voice and would you thank him right now? Hallelujah, I love you, Jesus, that we feel your presence on this Sunday morning here in Tennessee. I pray that you would continue to let us feel your love and your kindness. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Brother Zeke, would you bring my water, please, right there? You can be seated. <clears throat> One of the things that I love the most is I love the Word of God. It is something that I do. How many of you own a real Bible? I mean, you know, one of them, it's got pages and covers. Let me see. Hold up your hand. Can I meddle just a little bit, Brother Kelly? All right, with Brother Kelly's permission. How many of you brought your real Bible to church? Hold it up. Not your cell phone, that don't count. Not your iPad. Let me see your real Bible. There you go. All right. Hey, can I help you out? Um, I, I teach, I, I pastor a church in, in O'Fallon, Missouri. Great church. And I also teach the hyphen class. That's the young adult class. Man, we have a great time. And I make them bring their own Bible. If they don't bring a real Bible to church, we kind of make fun of them. You know, we, I'll ask them in that class. I'll say, how many of you brought a real Bible? And they have to hold it up. And uh, I'll say, now, how many of you forgot your Bible? And invariably, someone will forgot, forget it. And so we all, as a class, and I know it's not very spiritual, but it works. But we all look at them and we go, 
You need to bring a real Bible to church. Don't, don't bring your phone because chances are you don't go back and look at the notes you take on your phone. When Brother Kelly and the, and, and the ministry of this church is preaching, you ought to have a real Bible. You can write down some notes so that later on when you read that verse again, you'll see somewhere that, that someone preached or made a note. And, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. And so I love the Word of God. And uh, I, I do my very best. Sometimes I, I'm, I fail, but I do my very best every day to get up, and the first thing <coughs> I do is read my Bible. And, um, you know, there, I, I have cell phones and all that, and the reason I don't, I tell you, don't use your cell phone is because one day I, I can just see at the, towards the end of my life, I, I look my kids in the eye and I say, I want to give you the most prized possession of my life. And I hand them my cell phone. And they probably don't even make that cell phone by that time. And you can't find it. No, I want to be able to give my kids and give my grandkids a legacy. And so I have Bible. This is my third Bible that I've filled up with notes in the last about six or seven years. And, and I want to be able to look at my kids one day and say, let me give you the thing that sustained me in the bad days and the good days and when I didn't know what to do and when I was sick. I, w- I love the Word of God. And so I want to tell you a parable that is found in the Bible. You can find it in the book of, of Matthew. You can find it in the book of Mark. And you can also find it in the book of Luke. And uh, I'm not going to just read it because it's a kid's revival. And I don't want to just read it. I want to tell it to you. I want to act it out. And um, so uh, this is the first time I've ever done this sermon. So I'm a little nervous because normally I'm, I'm, I got the sermons down. In fact, I woke up this morning and I'm like, I should have done this and I should have got that, but I couldn't get to a store fast enough. But the Bible says one day a farmer went out to plant his garden. Now, now the King James would say a sower went out to sow, but none of us, you know, most of us when we say sow, we think of like putting a button on a shirt or something. And, uh, There we go. So the, the sower, one day the farmer, how many of you have ever had a garden or, or, or seen someone plant a garden before? All right. How many of you plan on, especially you adults, how many of you plan on planting a garden this year? Yeah, I, I, I planted a garden and, and it, it does pretty good. But my dad, he is the best gardener in the whole world. No, no joke. He, he could win awards for his yard and, and all of that. And he just bought some acreage. And so uh, he bought a tractor. And so now... Uh, last year and then even this year, we got a big garden, and I'm like, I'm gonna let him do all the work, and I'll just go enjoy the tomatoes. Any, there's nothing better than a fresh tomato from the garden. When I was growing up, I would I would have to mow the yard, and Dad had a garden, and I would mow the yard, and I'd, every time I circled the garden, I'd pick a tomato because there's nothing like it, or a fresh cucumber, or or fresh watermelon out of his garden. There's something just it's incredible, and so the Bible says. Uh, in there that the the farmer went out and he was going to plant some seeds now today I'm gonna need a lot of help okay so I'm gonna need some help when it gets to that point and I'll ask you so the the first thing I need I need uh, let's see I need a, a young man and a young lady to come help me all right let's see right there y'all two in the blue shirt young man and in the stripes right here yep come here come 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 all right so <coughs> Here, Zane, you can come up here and be my prop master. Awesome. Y'all are brother and sister? Cool. Well, right now, you're going to be birds. What's really cool about the birds is this. Zeke, you want to come help me up here? All right, so... All right, so come over here. So the the Bible says that the farmer went out and he had seed. Now, in the Bible days, they they would sow their seed. And what they would do is they would take handfuls of seed and they would throw them over the ground. And and that's how they would would sow their seed. And so the Bible says the farmer went out to throw his seed down. and, And as he threw his seed down, invariably some of the seed landed 
on ground like, like, like where people had walked on and they had trodden it down and it didn't go down very deep and the seed just kind of stayed there on the surface. And the Bible says that the birds came. All right, here, here's your chance for birds. So now what do birds eat? Seeds. Right? Bird seed. Yeah. So these birds flap their way over and they found that good seed and they begin to eat the seed that was on the ground. All right? So just pick up the seeds a little bit. Okay? You pick up two. There you go. You're doing good. Pick up here. You missed one right there. All right. And they ate their seed. Let me have the seed. And they ate their seeds. And do you think those seeds got a chance to grow? Did the seeds get a chance to grow? No, because the birds ate them. All right, so birds, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Here, I want you all to sit down right here, okay? This is dangerous because I'm going to leave all these kids up here, so I need you all just to sit quietly right there, okay? And then the Bible said, okay, let's see, I need, uh, I need two more people to come help me. Let's see, right there, yep, in the glasses, and uh, right there in the in the teal or whatever that color is. Yep, sea foam green. All right, I need one more person. Let's see. All right, right there in the white shirt. You come up here. All right. So the Bible says that, um, all right, you two, you two go help, help or, or, or uh, you two go, go help. Yeah, yeah, you come here. So the Bible said, then the farmer went out and he planted some seed. And he put the seed down in the ground, except this time, the seed fell on stony ground. I need my rocks. These are my rocks. Come here, Rocky. All right, this is my rock. You're a big old, you're a big old giant rock. All right, come on, you're a big old giant rock. There you go. And and that seed began to grow. And that seed began to grow, and it looked okay. And that seed, the Bible says, it grew. But the problem was, that ground was pretty rocky. That ground was pretty hard, and that seed didn't have a chance to put its roots deep down in the ground. And when the sun came, the sun beat down on this poor little plant, and because that plant didn't have any roots, it just kind of burned up. It didn't grow. You ever seen a tree or a, or a plant that didn't get watered, and the leaves begin to wither, and then they turn brown, and then they get all crumbly? That's what happened to this poor little plant, it couldn't root itself because of these nasty, mean old rocks. All right, y'all go sit right back here. All right, I need two more people to help me. Okay, let's see. Uh, all right, right there in the tie-dye shirt and, and with your pink uh, thing around you. Yep, come up here. And I need, uh, let's see, I need one other. I need a... I need a smaller kid to help me. How about right there? Yep, you're going to come help me. All right. So, so then, now come, come here, you two, two ladies. Actually, yep, come help me. <clears throat> Oh, whoops, that's wrong. There we go. All right. Now, come here. How many of you have ever seen weeds before? Have you ever noticed that weeds grow anywhere? Like, I've seen weeds grow on sidewalks. And I try to plant my, my stuff, and I plant it, and I give it the best soil and the best water, and I can't grow anything. But weeds grow everywhere. And so the Bible says that, that the sower went out, and he sowed his seed. All right, come help me, man. 
the sower went out and sowed his seed. And this time, it was a lot better, man. He found some good ground, and he began to grow, and he began to look good. And I mean, everything was perfect. He was getting all excited. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible said those mean old weeds. Now, now you got to be careful, okay? We can't have any violence in the church. But those mean old weeds, come here, they choked out. And that poor flower couldn't grow because the weeds crowded. And the weeds made sure that it didn't get any water. When the rain came, the weeds soaked up all the water. And when, the, when, the, when, when it, it was trying to get nourishment from the soil, the weeds got it first. And the weeds grew awesome. And this poor little flower didn't hardly grow at all. Everybody say, oh. All right, y'all go sit right back here. <coughs> but the Bible says... The sower went out to sow. And he had thrown his seed out and some of the seed had landed on the path and the birds had eaten it. And some of the seed had landed in the rocky soil and and it didn't have any root. And when the sun came, it withered away. And some of the seed fell on what looked like good ground, but the weeds choked it out. But there, as the farmer sowed, he sowed his ground, his seed, on some really good ground. And the Bible says that that seed grew. And that seed produced. And I know it's a flower, but if it was a tomato plant, the Bible says some of it, that tomato plant, it produced 20 tomatoes. And another one produced 40 tomatoes. And another one produced 100 tomatoes because it found good ground to grow. Are you excited? Now, The disciples looked at Jesus and they said, cool story. What's it mean? Why did you tell us a gardening story? And I'm glad you asked. Because here's what the Bible says. All right, little birds, come up here. I'm sorry, yeah, birds, come up here. Y'all stand right here. The Bible says that the seed is the word of God. Everybody say the word of God. When you hear your pastor, Brother Kelly, get up here and preach, and he begins to preach a message, and he is telling you what the Bible says, he is sowing that seed into this congregation. He's he's trying to plant the Word of God in our hearts. And what we desire more than anything is that the Word of God would grow inside of us. All right, guys. Any of you ever had your mama... Or your school teachers say, I tell you something and it goes in one ear and right out the other. Uh Uh-huh. Have any of you ever been accused of not listening before? Yep. And, um, And sometimes when your pastor and your Sunday school teacher and the people who preach in this church, sometimes when they preach, they preach an amazing sermon. And there are some people who don't make a move, and they sit down in those pews, and before that word of God can get planted in our hearts, the Bible says the devil comes and steals the word of God away, and we walk out of those doors, and our lives are never changed because we never let the word of God in. It's a dangerous spot to be. I'm going to let you come and begin to play. And then the Bible says, where's my, where's my rocks? Come on, guys. Come stand right there. Come on. The Bible says that the Word of God sometimes falls, and it falls in some rocky places. There the Word is implanted in our hearts, but it doesn't get any growth. You know, rocks are kind of hard to grow things in. I mean, why do we, when we, have a, when we have a garden, we go get out the tiller or my dad's got a big old tractor and he goes and he turns that, that soil up. And man, when we did that the first time last year, we, we, I can't tell you how many side-by-side loads of rocks we got out of that spot. and We kept throwing them in a pile because the Word of God needs to not find hardened hearts. 
The Word of God doesn't need to find somebody that, that's not receptive to the Word. I've watched people come to our church. The first time they step foot in our church, they come and they, they, uh, they, 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 they come and they hear the Word of God and man, they, it, it, it gets planted in their heart and they're kind of excited about it. But they never get any growth. And as soon as life gets a little tough, that poor little, little flower withers away because our hearts were too hardened. All right, where's my uh, weeds and my, my other plant? The Bible says the, the preacher, he goes and he sows the word of God. And there it falls on what looks like good ground and it begins to grow. And for a while, that, 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 that person, you, you feel good. I mean, it, it looks good. But then those weeds come. And those weeds, now be careful, act like you're choking them. Don't really do it, but act like you're choking them. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a choke is just a very violent hug. And, um, and so it chokes out the life. I've seen so many people come to our church. They come down to the altar. They lift their hands. The tears run down their face. I've watched them get baptized. I've watched them even get filled with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> but as soon as they get home, they start caring more about what other people say. And they start caring about the world and the riches. And, and pretty soon, the cares of life choke it away. Zeke, come here, Zeke. Come stand right here. But oh, when you let the Word of God find a prepared heart. And you take that Word of God and you say, Lord, I hear the Word. I'm going to obey the Word. And I'm going to do whatever the Word says. When you get that Word of God in your heart, you begin to grow. And you begin to grow. Do I, have, do I have any elders in the church that you've been in church more than 50 years? Would you stand with me? Do I have any elders in the church that's been here more than 50 years? Whew. All right? If this doesn't apply to you, sit down. How many of you have been in church more than 60 years? Do I have any elders that have been in church more than 70 years? <laughs> How long? Nineteen. Eighty-one years. What's your name? What's your name? Jeanette Gaunt. G U N Gun. Sister Gun. Eighty-one years. Can I tell you what happens? When you let the Word of God get inside of your heart, can I tell you what? You, you can live for 81 years growing and productive and loving God and listening to the Word of God and not giving up. That's what it means. You can say, but pastor, I'm just eight years old. It's all right. If you'll get the Word of God inside of your life, if you'll listen to what your pastor says and your Sunday school teachers and your youth pastors and your parents and your grand, if you'll listen to the Word of God, one day you'll be able to stand in this church. It probably won't be in this building. You'll be in a bigger building by that point. But one day, 81 years from now, you'll be able to stand here and lift your hands and say, I remember when I let the Word of God into my life. All right, guys, go see, go see Mr. Zane, and he'll help you take it off. Let's give our, all of our rocks and weeds and birds, let's give them a great big hand. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay standing. I, I know it's an interesting sermon because you got to say, now, now, Brother Buford, how are you going to get us to an altar call? Well, there's so many things I could do and so many ways I could say it. But I feel the presence of God in here right now. You got to obey what the Word says. If the Word of God says you must repent, 
then you better repent of your sins. If the Word of God says you must be born of the water and of the Spirit, then you must go down into the waters that I believe is right behind this mural. There's a baptistry right there. You've got to be baptized in the only saving name, the name of Jesus. Why Jesus? Well, that's because Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter 24, verse 40. He says that if you're going to have your sins remitted, which means removed, if you're going to have your sins forgiven, then you're going to have to preach it in Jesus' name, which is why when Peter stood on the day of Pentecost, he said, here's what you need to do. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost you got to grab a hold of this word if the word says he can heal you then you need to grab hold of that word and say Lord I believe and watch him do a work in your life those ten commandments they're not suggestions and they still apply today when the Bible says don't lie and don't cheat and That's what it means. The Word of God. I hope somewhere a parable that Jesus preached that we acted out would grab hold of each one of you no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are. And the next time your pastor gets up behind this this pulpit and begins to preach the Word of God, don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Don't walk out of that door without applying that Word to your life. Don't don't let your life get so hardened and rocky that you never let the Word of God grow inside of you and put down some roots. Be careful that you don't let the weeds of this life choke out the growth that God wants to do in you. And instead, would you let the Word of God grow? Because I'm telling you right now, the sky is the limit in what Jesus wants to do in your life right now. I've, I've wrestled a long time how I want to end this because it's not a traditional, you know, Holy Ghost kids crusade. But I think the best way we could end this right now is for this entire church to act upon the Word of God. I think it'd be great on a Sunday where we've, we're representing families and we've got all generations for all of us that can just to begin to make your way out of your altar. Got kids, why don't you be the first down to the front and let's just fill up this altar space and the, the aisles that go back and why don't we begin to pray? It'd be great if some of these kids had Sunday school teachers around them and maybe some elders around them to help them hear you pray right now. Lord, I want to hear the Word of God, and I want to have the Word of God in my heart, and I want to obey the Word of God right now. Lord, I believe this in Jesus' name. We want to grow, and I'm asking over this entire church body, from the children to the young people to our, our, our adults and our elders, Lord, let us grow, we pray, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Myself away, so you can you come on. You got to let the word of God get within you, let the presence of God get in you. Hallelujah! I give myself to you. To you I belong, Lord, I give myself, I give myself to you, I give myself away, I give myself away, so you can use. 
you to stand up right now I know you're kneeling down but I want us just to I want it to look like we're growing if you will would you lift your hands as high as you can would you turn your face to heaven and would you use your outside voice and would you thank him right now thank him for the word of God thank him for the word of God I love you Jesus Lord, I'm asking that you would let me obey what the Word says. Forgive me of my sins, O Lord. Forgive me of all the things I've done wrong. God, I'm yours. And I want to grow. I want to grow in you. Lord, I need to be baptized. I want my sins washed away. Lord, my life's not my own you I belong I give myself I give myself to you I give myself oh hallelujah 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 I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away in your name in your name God I love you I love you I love you boys and girls I know sometimes you think you know I'm just little what does that have to do to me what does that have what does that mean to me I don't know about you but I was once little and I begin my Sunday school teachers begin to feed the word of God into my life And now when I'm scared and when I'm afraid, I can remember those scriptures that say, God does not give me the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. When the devil begins to talk to me and tell me that I'm nothing, I remember those scriptures that my Sunday school teacher used to talk about that says the devil, that God went down 
to death, hell, and the grave and took away those keys. And the devil doesn't have any power anymore. As I begin to add those scriptures to my heart, it says that, that God will never leave me or forsake me. He's always there. And I, every once in a while, I have to reach way down into one of those roots. And God gives me another one of those scriptures that I've planted and grown. But you got to start it right now when you're little. You got to start reading the word, listening in church, listening in Sunday school. Because the scripture, the power of the scripture can take you through so many things. The power of the word of God is like a sword, sharper than to any two-edged sword. And it can cut through anything. That means when Jesus wrote the Bible, he wrote the Bible for every situation you will ever go through in your life. There's a scripture for that. I don't know about you guys, but let's raise our hands and thank God for his word. Can we do that? Everybody in the room, young, old, thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, God, for your word that you can, I can apply it to my life. I can apply it to my every day, Lord God. Thank you for your word. God, thank you for taking the time to jot down in a book that I can open every day and I can learn. I can learn from your word. I can cling to your word, God, when I need it more than anything. Your word is what I desire. God, I love you, Jesus. I love you. Let's give Jesus one big round of applause. Let's give him one big. Come on, as loud as you can. Come on, I know this was like a basketball game. And at some basketball games, we shout louder for a hoop. We shout louder for a goal. But let's give Jesus one big praise. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. But this has been an awesome revival. This has been awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you kids for coming. If you guys want to go back and sit down for just a second, I think we got a couple more prizes, do we? Y'all want to do a couple more prizes real quick? I got a couple more. I got a couple more. Y'all did awesome. You did amazing. How many more do we have left, Sister April? We'll hurry, we'll hurry, I promise. I know you guys want to go to lunch. I'm going to call them out, and you guys come stand up here. Ready? 9484. 9484. 9496. 